wanted to make was something with the Beautiful Moments stamp set, which of course is one of my favorites because this is one that celebrates uh, my daughters and one that I had a hand in designing and also celebrates New Zealand with some of the imagery and the Rangitoto image. So what I wanted to do was make a card that celebrates the relationships and friendships we have with our friends of every color. And this is what I made initially. And this is based on a card designed by the very talented artisan team member, Tammy Wilson. I really liked the layout that she had used. However, I wasn't entirely happy with how this has turned out. So I thought maybe we'll just try another version and see if we can make this even better than what I have made here. So what I wanted to use in the background were these beautiful in good taste papers that you see have woods and bricks and fabrics and marbles and tiles and all sorts of just beautiful neutral prints. Really great to use. So initially what I chose was, let me just pull it out, this brick one because I thought it carried out the theme quite nicely of the whites and the mediums and the darker mediums and the darker darkers that all sitting together um, and looking beautiful together. However, I'm wondering if it's too busy, like too much contrast for behind that image. So I thought what I'll do is try another version using just these bricks that are white or white-ish, kind of white and gray and a little bit of some peachy colors in there. So let's see what that's gonna look like. So for my foundation, I have cut using the ornate uh, ornate frames dies. You get quite a few in this set. So it's this one here that I used. Just cut one of those and then trimmed about a centimeter and a half off the top so it's just a little bit shorter so it didn't go the whole length of the card. So I'm gonna go ahead and adhere that down using my Tombow or you could use tape, doesn't matter for this particular thing. And you maybe notice that I've left some of the little circles in. You can poke them all out if you want, but I kind of like that look of some of them being in sides, um, left inside the die. And then what I did is I cut a piece of white that just fit inside those stitching lines. So it ended up being about two inches across and then not sure how tall that is I would say that's about four, about four inches, but of course it would just match whatever you've cut. So let's do some some stamping. I also thought maybe I stamped that a little bit too high, so I'm gonna pull it down a little lower this time. So I'm stamping with Memento Black, and I'm gonna use these two little girls on a New Zealand beach, and I'm gonna stamp those a little lower this time. Okay, and then I'm gonna do a real sim a simple masking technique. So what I've done is just stamp those little girls out on a piece of scrap paper. This is a post-it note, doesn't have to be a post-it note. And then just trimmed around the top part of the image. And then I'm gonna stamp up Rangitoto and then just stamp that in between them. Okay, and then when you remove that post-it note, or the mask, you'll get that eye, um, that island behind them, or behind the image, but it's actually, with the way they're facing, it's actually in front of them, right? And then you just place your birds. And on this sample, you maybe um, didn't know this, but one of the reasons why I asked for butterflies and birds in this stamp set was not only because butterflies and birds are prevalent in New Zealand, but because it's for co they're co for covering up little stray marks, which is exactly why my birds are positioned where they are on that card, because there was a little mark there. One thing I forgot to mention and just thought of it now, this is the Tasteful Textures embossing folder, and I did use that on this printed paper. So maybe you can see that there, that it does have some texture. So when you buy the pack, the papers are all smooth, but I just wanted to add that little bit extra texture to them. So let's color these girls up and I'm gonna color them quite differently I think than I colored here. I think I can see some some ways I could make it a little bit better. 
So first, I'm going to start with, I think, their dresses. But I think I will leave their dresses the um, petal pink that that I did them there because there is, if you, I don't know if you can see that, there is a little bit of petal pink in those papers. And there seems to be, just from looking at it, um, some purple in those papers. Like there's definitely a purple tinge to them. So what I've done is I've gone through some of the creases on her dress with the dark petal pink, and I'm just gonna go and fill in with the light petal pink. And I'm just gonna keep going over and over and over until the two colors blend together so it all looks like one color just with some shading and you can go back and add a little more if you want more um, dark in there you can add some more okay and then I'm just gonna I'm gonna make her be a little blondie because the little kids often have a um, little blondie here mine did and then got darker as they got older. And then the older girl's dress, I'm gonna color with the dark petal pink and the light pumpkin pie. So they're kind of another step, another step darker. So I'm gonna do her um, creases on her dress in the dark pumpkin pie. I mean, sorry, take that back. The light pumpkin pie. And then go back over with the dark petal pink. So you can see there's quite a contrast there, but if you just keep going, 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 they will blend together. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now I want her hair dark. I kind of felt that the black was a little too dark. I don't know how you girls feel, or people feel about that, but it just felt a little, yeah, just too dark. So I'm gonna take my darkest brown that we have for her hair, which is the dark soft suede. Yeah, I like that better. I don't know, I think it's because you can still see the stamped um, details with that. And if you want to lighten it, then you can use the color lifter, which is the white marker and or you can just lighten like parts of it. But just keep in mind when you use this that you need to just let it develop a little bit. So it's not gonna lighten straight away. I can see that that's starting to lighten. Okay, just so that the hair doesn't look like just this solid helmet. I mean, I know that I am no professional with the blends or anything, but if you're just looking for some little tips, then that's one way to do it. Now, then I wanna do their skin color. So I'm going to do the young girl in the ivory. And I have found when doing the skin, at least for the very pale skinned, it, it doesn't hurt to leave a little white space so that you're just getting kind of that suggestion of the color. And you can even go back with your stamp and blend. I mean, sorry, with your color lifter just to kind of bleed those colors together. And then this girl, I want to do a bit um, with a little darker skin. So I'm just going to get a piece of paper because I think I decided the light crumb cake, mm, it almost had kind of a gray tinge to it, which I didn't really want. So maybe that dark crumb cake would be the better choice. But I also don't want it to match too much with her hair. Maybe I'll do a little dark and then put the light over top. That's probably a good solution. Let's see what that looks like. Some of you have um, maybe already done this where you've perfected the skin color a little better than I have. Okay, yeah, actually, I think I'm happy with that. And again, if you want to add light spots, like highlights, like on the back of her calves, you can just use your color lifter, that kind of thing. Okay, and then I think for the buckets, I'm going to go for the purple posy, because like I mentioned, I think these papers actually have a little bit of purple tinge to them. Yeah. 
You could do the buckets different colors, but um, I'm kind of wanting to show unity here. And I don't think, I mean, I really think that 99.9% .9 of people are actually okay with, with anyone, no matter what their color is, especially where so many people are like mixed race anyway these days. But it never hurts to just say it out loud. Okay, I've just gone over with my color lifter. Oh, you know what? No one said anything. I forgot to color her face. That looks a bit bizarre. I'll just do a little dark there. And a little bit of the light crumb cake there. There, that looks good. Okay, so what I thought, one of the things I thought I would do differently on this one is make these mountains and the sand, do them in, I think, gray. I'm wondering if gray is going to work just so that the skin colors stood out more than they are. Let's see what it looks like. We're just experimenting here. So even if it, you know you prefer the first version, at least we've tried and we've learned something along the way. Okay, so we're gonna do that. And then we're gonna go, sorry, that was the, that was the dark smoky slate. And this is the light smoky slate. And again, you just want to blend, blend, blend till they go together. It might, if someone were being a little um, particular, they might not like having gray sand, but I think it just gives you that, that illusion or that effect. Now for the water, because I felt like it was a little bit blank through the middle, but I didn't want to add more color. So this is something that we did at the last extravaganza is we're going to use just the white, frost white shimmer paint and our aqua painter. Although we have new aqua painters called water painters now, but I uh, was a little hesitant to take my brand new brushes and put them in paint. So we're using the old ones here. In some ways, it's not a bad idea to keep your some of your older tools around like, um, like this, because then you can use them on stuff that potentially um, is a little messy and it doesn't matter too much. Okay, so that, well, although it didn't add color to the project, it's just going to add a little bit of sparkle and shimmer where the water is. Okay, so before we add that onto the card, we're going to do our twine. There it is. So how I'm going to do the twine is I'm going to cut it double the length, or the width of the card, sorry, plus a little bit. We're going to fold, fold it in half. Karen says old Wink of Stella pens are good for your kind of messy, potentially damaging techniques, and yes, I would agree with that. That's a good use for them. So I've folded my twine in half, and then I'm just going to wrap it around my card, like so. And then if I can find the end of my tape, I'm going to tap, tack those on the back. So we have no twine or ribbon or whatever you're wanting to use on the back of your project. Everything that you've spent that money on is on the front of your card, which is always a good thing. Okay, now we're gonna put this onto the front. If I can find my dimensionals, there they are. I think New Zealand does an excellent job of accepting peoples of all races and cultures, thank goodness, being a foreigner myself. So it's something that I is near and dear to my heart. Okay, um, and I just saw one more little thing that I did that I think I'll use this. So I'm going to just add some speckles onto it. So you can see the few of them there. I probably should have done that before I stuck it on, but it's not really a big deal if there's speckles anywhere. So you can use your, your standard water-based markers, or you can use your blends. And I, I can see that this one's been a bit... Um, well loved anyway, so I'm not worried about it. So I'm just flicking it with my on the lid 
and just getting some splatters of color. And if you end up with a pool of ink in the lid, you can just kind of flick that lid as well and get just a few more splatters. Okay, I'm happy with that. Then we're gonna do our twine. And I did, well, while I tie that, I'm gonna ask, do you like that ribbon with it? That might be a bit bland. The peach ribbon with it or the white ribbon with it. This one I have the white on there. So I'll see if anyone has a, a preference while I tie this bow. So just give yourself plenty of twine or ribbon when you're tying bows. It's very hard to tie a bow when you have not enough or just barely enough. Okay. Andrea is saying peach. I'm leaning towards giving the peach a try as well. Okay. Well, Andrea, I'm ready for it and you win. So we're gonna go with that. So what I'm gonna do is cut off another few inches or uh, I don't know what that is, about five inches of twine. I'm gonna grab the peach ribbon and you may or may not like this, but we're just gonna give it a go. I'm gonna cut the ribbon up the middle this is another thing I saw on the internet and I actually thought it was kind of cool. And then pull some of that, pull some of the strands out so you're just kind of in, end up with this little frayed bit. Okay, then what I'm gonna do, we could put the white in there as well. Maybe I should do that. Nah, I'll just stick with this. Okay, then I'm just gonna take this piece and tie Sorry, tie around it with this piece of twine. So it's gonna look something like that. And these are probably too long at the moment, but I'll trim them down. We'll just find my glue dots. Okay, so all I've done is taken two pieces of ribbon, tied them around with a piece, tied around them with a piece of linen thread. And I'm just gonna take this and slide it up under my bow. And then I'm gonna cut these a bit shorter. Okay, so we're getting something that looks like that. And we can decide if we like that as much as the white, or maybe I should add some of the white in there as well, but we can, I'll play with that. And then these pieces, oops, these pieces that we tied the um, peach ribbon with, you can just cut those so they're about the same length as your bow. So you're getting some extra twine in there as well. Okay, then I did cut, oh, it's over here. Cut, uh, emboss the My Friend. Uh, here it is. So I chose actually a different stamp set. So this, this one I'm using the Ornate Thanks because I, I love these fonts, uh, this font, I should say, and these sayings. And they fit so nicely inside the stitched rectangle dies. So I'm just going to put that on the card. I also felt that that was maybe a little bit uh, wimpy if I can use that word, like it needed to be a little bit, a little bit more. So I thought, um, I don't know. I just thought it would be nice to make a card that celebrates all of our friends who are of any different ethnicity than ourselves, whatever that may be. And I appreciate being accepted by people not of my ethnicity as well. So then this is going to go up on just a white card base with dimensionals. If I can get the backs off, this will be here all night. I'll just put that on. I'm thinking I like it better with the lighter background, but what do you think? And then on the inside, I have your somebody's blessing, which does come with that beautiful moment stamp set there it is, you're somebody's blessing. So nice, and I mean, who wouldn't love to be told that, that they were someone's blessing? Okay, and then put that inside your card. It's always nice to mat the inside with 
just another layer, not only for the color, but I think because you have usually have several layers on the front, it just gives the same weight on the like the second half of the card as the front half so that when it, the person's holding it, it feels quite um, significant, like it feels good. So then we just need our little embellishments because pretty much every project that I like has some sparkles. So I'm going to use the champagne rhinestones and pearls. We also have these new elegant faceted gems, which are the right colors. They're just not quite as um, deep of a color. So, and I wanted something that stood out a little bit more, but these are another option as well. So, oops, I'm just going to put the pearls, oops, the pearls and the rhinestones together. And that may be something that you don't, oops, don't always think to do, but it is really nice to mix your embellishments, the pearls and the rhinestones, even on the same project. Hmm. Now, where would I put this? Maybe here. And here. Maybe there. Something like that. I might have put that down a little bit lower, but I think I'm pretty happy with it as is. All right, ladies. So, um, I just wanted to have a little moment to say that uh, well done, and I appreciate my friends of every color, and I appreciate my friends of every color accepting me, whatever um, color and culture we all are. And I hope you've enjoyed that, and maybe think of using your stamp set in this way as well. Have a good evening, everyone. Mm -hmm.